Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This is episode number 284, Women, the Physical Signs of Testosterone Deficiency. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So Dr. Maupin and I are having a continuing series of discussions about the physical signs of of, uh, hormone deficiency, hormone imbalances. We've been... uh, (coughs) Doing this for a couple of weeks, we have two or three other hormones that we've talked about and how you can recognize physically if you are suffering from one of those deficiencies. And the reason that that matters is not to try to train you to be a physician or to have you self-diagnose, but for you to become more self-aware so that when you go to a physician, you can say, I, I've noticed this and I wonder if it means anything or will you check this for me because it might mean something. Uh, Doctors generally are trained to look and assess and almost a parallel thinking. They, they do it in the back of their mind, but, they, but they're trained to do it consciously as well. I mean, it's hard to turn off. Like you talk about when you go out right. socially and you see somebody, you go, oh my gosh, she's got a goiter problem or he's a walking heart attack. Or she, you know. That's and, actually, it's really, it's true and I can't turn it off. Yeah. And so I'm at a party with people that I know some of the people, but maybe not everybody. Most of the people that I know, I have found a way to suggest they come to see me if I think something's going to happen yeah. or if there's something wrong. But people who I don't know, I have, I'm not going to walk up to them and say, gee, there's a real problem here. I think, I mean, they think I was fishing for business. Exactly. exactly. And, and that's people ridiculous. That aren't going to think that. But. Right. But, but if, the, if a stranger walked up to you and said, Hey, I yeah. think there here's might, might be a problem. Me. I'm an undertaker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it, you know, in, in medical school, they teach us to be really observant. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's huge because not everyone is observant. So they teach us to look at people in a certain way, kind of top to bottom, look at how they walk, look at how they shake your hand, how they speak. And there's sort of a triage. <clears throat> I mean, I'm mm-hmm. taught the same thing in my training about reading nonverbals. And like... Exactly. Yeah, like, what does that mean? I'm you know, angry. And very often people work hard on learning to mask their face and hold it still. Mm-hmm. They can't mask their eyes necessarily, mm-hmm. but there, there's there's a triage that you go to to check other things, like their breathing. You, you watch their breathing. You watch their hands. Now you watch I'm their like, feet. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm thinking if, about if breathing. If they're masking their face. So now everyone who listens to this and is my friend yeah. is is going to like not walk up to me or not even turn around because they don't want me to look you know, at them. You're, but you're not gonna have any friends left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but that's probably true after we do this. But but in any case, I I usually look at my patients uh-huh. or someone who I'm worried about, kind of top to bottom, mm-hmm. and and our our biggest telltale organ. Is our skin, right. believe it or not. Right. So uh, for, for women, women have lots of ways of improving their skin, making it look younger, healthier. But in general, somebody who doesn't have testosterone anymore, which would be anybody over 40 would be a candidate. Everybody who's had their ovaries out is definitely without testosterone, but I don't know that about them all the, all the time. You can't look so, at someone externally and know they have their ovaries out. Right. Mm-hmm. You can't. But but I can look at somebody externally and look at their skin and say, "Oh my gosh, they, they need some testosterone. Signs. Their their skin's their skin's really wrinkly and it's falling down and it's thin and I can see blood vessels through it and it's it it looks like somebody who's older than they are." You know, that is, that's a sure sign. And if they've done something to their face with plastic surgery or lasers to make it look better, it always does better when they have testosterone replaced first. But, but then I look at their hands because their hands are the telltale sign. So then if you look at hands and you see all the blood vessels, you see their, you see their, you don't have that. Men don't tend to get this as much as women. We don't have as much tissue on our hands and you guys are stronger than we are in using your hands, but 
you can usually see all the tendons, wrinkly skin that stays up when you do that. Of course, nobody's going to do that for you unless yeah, you, you ask if them. If you pinch and pucker if, it, yeah, and stay. it stays yeah. up, mm -hmm. then that's really something that's dehydration, and usually that's lack of collagen, and it's lack of thickness to the skin because you can see through it. That's lack of testosterone. So that's like my first sign. So I kind of look at that and say, hmm, we have a problem here. So, I mean, you've you've looked at people and said they look much older than they are. What's right. wrong? Right. You know, and that's and that's. Well, I take the pieces apart. You just say, overall, somebody looks older than they are. So one of the other ways, I mean, you've looked at people who they, they walk in like this. Yeah. Or like I tell my husband who's had a knee operation, they limp. Well. Then you think, oh, you know, but, but his but you have is to an be operation. Careful. I mean, again, the thing with nonverbals is they're never individually <clears throat> predictive. Right. So I learn things globally. This often, usually, regularly indicates a problem. Then I have mm -hmm. to find out for that individual is that applicable to you? For instance, mm -hmm. I learned years ago that young boys, adolescent boys, who walk with their shoulders down and around like they're bent over against mm -hmm. a strong wind, that is very often an indicator that they have struggles with a domineering, aggressive father. Huh. And it's like I didn't know that. They're walking uphill against the wind. So I can look at a boy who walks like that or stands like that and, and make that mm -hmm. assumption, but then I have to check it out. Right. No, I mean, none I of these things know. stand on alone. Right. I mean, it's possible that someone could have a connective tissue disease, like their, their connective tissue ages faster than the rest of them and they still have testosterone. Mm -hmm. Or they could have starved. Or they're not eating the right things to build collagen. So these things can be signs of something else, but when you globally put them together that's what we're talking about the pieces that when you look in the mirror if you see this you look at your hands you go oh my gosh that that's there and then you start looking at other things like like ha hair you know everyone thinks testosterone causes your hair to fall out which is wrong testosterone is what gives us the oil in our hair and our hair follicles when we're young to make our hair thick and shiny and that's why young women have thick and shiny hair is that they've got plenty of testosterone and estrogen but testosterone is what makes it shiny and makes it manageable makes it grow quickly so when I look at somebody who has um, hair that is I can see through mm -hmm. you know I just look here and I can see all the way through on there you see scalp through the follicles right yeah. so and it's not just that they have great roots, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I've been accused of. Anyway, uh, but it's really thin hair, or they have thin hair all over their head, basically, and especially right in front. Right in front alone means lack of estrogen. All yeah, over their head I could see be... women, I mean, I don't know that I acknowledge it so much in men, because you see a lot of bald and balding right. men. But you don't see a lot of bald and balding women, and when mm -hmm. you do see one, it always gets your attention. Mm -hmm. And if the front quadrant mm -hmm. of their skull, uh, sort of that prefrontal lobe mm -hmm. thing, <laughs> is thinned out and going bald, you think, oh my gosh, what's what's wrong? And, I mean, as a layman, that's right. what I think. And, and you so think, I think in the front, that's lack of estradiol. They've gone through menopause. Their ovaries have been removed. They need some estrogen to grow that hair back and quick before all the follicles scar up. So that's that's what I look at, but then again, Here's what testosterone does have to do with hair. When we're, when we're young, we have a high free testosterone level, that's the part that works, and a moderate or low dihydrotestosterone level. What happens as we get older, so this is dihydrotestosterone. So it's lower than our testosterone, both men and women, but we're talking about women here. So as our ovaries fail, the testosterone itself drops the di dihydrotestosterone may stay the same, but as this drops and the ratio and the ratio Which, changes, mm -hmm. that's when we start losing our hair. Yeah. So we need to increase the testosterone over the dihydrotestosterone, and for us to get our hair back. And then there's a window in which that can be recovered or mm -hmm. uh, stopped. As long as you have not had long, and the window's different for everyone, so it's hard to okay. it's hard to predict, but you can stimulate the follicles with internal testosterone. And we do sometimes use creams and gels 
to rub into those to areas if someone can't take pellets. We give them something to put into the scalp, which locally helps the estrogen level or the testosterone level or decreases the dihydrotestosterone level. Mm -hmm. So all of those things in, in medical form or natural medical form can make your hair thicker by increasing your testosterone. So for women, is it just the hair on the head that adjusts itself? That's a very nice uh, way of asking of that. Is it loss of testosterone or is it elsewhere on the body? It's elsewhere on the body. Um, if you if you go to, <laughs> one of the things I was most shocked about is when I started taking care of older women, they progressively lost pubic hair. So pubic hair is stimulated by testosterone. Okay. So as they aged, they became bald, not on their head, but that, that hair went away. And it starts going away as testosterone begins to drop in our, in our 40s usually. Not everyone is the same, obviously, but as pubic hair goes away, and you have to remember, people shave everything. So well, some, some do. Some I, do. And I hadn't gotten, to be honest, I hadn't gotten as far as thinking about pubic hair for older women. Oh, okay. Uh, what were you I was thinking about? Well, I was remembering my grandmother. <laughs> she used to wear hose. This was back before they had pantyhose. Mm -hmm. And she would roll them to just below her mm -hmm. knee. And mm -hmm. then there was a big roll that and held I had, them up. And my grandmother did that, and too. And then above her knee, there would be this little wisp of bristly hair, like you'd see on a hog's back or something. Because <laughs> she didn't shave her legs. Mm -hmm. And I, I was... Wondering, because until I started working with you and we started mm -hmm. to write the book, I never knew that women had testosterone or needed it. I know. Mm -hmm. And so as we have these conversations, sometimes I think back to, well, would that have been something that she would have suffered from? Women get um, hair like on, on their chin, these really nasty, really yeah. thick, hard uh, kind of whiskers, even if they're not shaving, and don't shave your face, by the way, but um, because they get bristlier. Yeah. But they, but we get these like nasty little hairs there, and we get really coarse hair on our legs. If that's another thing, testosterone drops and our adrenal gland takes over, right. it sends out what I call second-class androgens or a testosterone-like hormone, mm -hmm. androstenedione. dione. It makes ugly, ugly hair and it makes us look old. I mean, big old black hairs here or bristly hairs on your leg that, yeah, that look like an animal's kind of hair. That has to do with the adrenal gland taking over because the ovaries failed. So you I get all this nasty hair. I was just being a farm hair. woman and having a hard life. You know, she never my, had my, my grandmother had that too. And, well, it, so just, and she was in, she was a New York girl. So yeah. that was not that was <laughs> that was not just being out in the country, but okay. but as we lose our testosterone, our eyebrows, the whole eyebrow thins. Hmm. So when we have we had eyebrows, well, you were saying in our last and podcast, no eyebrows, thyroid is like the just last quarter or last the, half. The outside goes away, right? But with, but testosterone, with testosterone, testosterone, all the eyebrows go away. And you've heard of Latisse, which we sell at our office, prescribe uh -huh. and sell for eye eyelashes. Mm -hmm. Some people, the eyelashes actually get thinner because their testosterone is low. So that those are two things that show people that you're young. Is it nice, healthy, thick eyebrows, nice, healthy, thick lashes, think mascara, then, uh, I mean, seriously. So those two things, when they're gone, that's secondary to lack of testosterone. Okay, so I interrupted your flow. You were going through a hierarchy top to bottom, and you mm -hmm. started with hair. Mm -hmm. What's the second thing that you notice that makes you think a woman is losing or has lost testosterone? Well, usually, I, I mean, it's easier in the summer when people, you know, have their arms out. But mm -hmm. when people come in and they've got this... A waddle that hangs the, down? The sag. Same thing under the chin? Yeah, same thing under the chin. Okay. But this, the they don't have any muscle here. Yeah. So their muscle has gotten thinner, and it's sagging down, and then there's fat and skin sagging down. That's secondary to lack of testosterone. And that can get better within reason. I mean, it doesn't always get completely better, sadly, when you take testosterone. Well, but what's interesting is, you know, for years... Who knows how many? We've all just assumed that's a sign of aging. I mean, we used to make jokes, men, about, you know, I used to have a bicep and now it just hangs down here, right. which rolled down. Well, that could be that I've gotten out of shape, but it's more likely to be that I've lost testosterone. But here's a clue. The clue is 
aging equals testosterone lack in general. Right. Because testosterone stimulates the other hormones that keep us young looking. Well, in your book, you say it's the gatekeeper. It is the catalyst, the the, uh, first step in the aging cascade. Right. So if you're thinking that you look older than you should, that's probably the most global sign that you need some testosterone. And the book that we're talking about is The Secret Female Hormone by Dr. Kathy Moffman and, and Brett. And me. So, so that's, get that. So, yeah. So, so I, have, I have a friend who, um, we were talking about muscle structure. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who doesn't have eyebrows and, and has, and I'm sure she doesn't listen to this, so, and, and doesn't have any muscle. I mean, her arms are this big around. And her skin's hanging. And I, you know, but this is something she doesn't want anybody to mess with her hormones. So that's her wish. And it's not my job to, well, no, you can't to say, force your friends to I'm, just, them, I'm yeah. just afraid she's going to get sick. I mean, she is so trying to be young by losing weight that she's, she, and she isn't making muscle. I'm, I'm worried that she's going to get ill, become ill. But, but having said that, you know, because we love our friends, we want them to be well as long as we're well, you know, for years. So, but so being... you say crass things like, you, do you mind if I treat your husband's next wife? No, but you would. You would say <laughs> that, but, but, and that might get her attention, but that's... <laughs> So let me let me say another thing. When you turn around and I mean, I walk in crowds and I look at people as the crowd. And in the summertime or like if you're at a amusement park or you're at the pool and a woman who looks great in front flips around and she's got boobs on the top of her back hanging over her bra and it looks like she's got two boobs here and then underneath the bra strap and above her waist. She's got two big saggy kind of other boobs. And then and she thinks she looks great because she never looks at her back. So, so I mean, I that's smiling. a sign of loss of testosterone. No, I'm smiling because that's a point you make. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Dr. Moppin also has a side to her practice and her business about aesthetics. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that she always promotes in the springtime when women start thinking about getting a new swimsuit and, and swimsuit season is take a picture, have somebody take a picture of you in your swimsuit from the back and post it on your refrigerator. For exactly this reason, <laughs> you don't see what you look like from the back. And that will motivate you to not eat the cake, not eat the pie, not eat the bread, not eat, you know, not eat or, all the crud. Or kill the photographer, yeah. <laughs> whichever is easier to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> but but that's one of those things we don't see, and we should have right. some, we should have some, idea that other people see that as much as they see us walking toward them. I mean, I see a gal that's beautiful. She's probably had plastic surgery. She's probably, you know. Had a and a tummy tuck, but not a back tuck. Yeah, but not a back yeah. tuck. And so she walks by, and I flip around and look at her, and then there's this stuff. And even seeing it through clothes, and I'm thinking, I could fix that. <laughs> I mean, testosterone and, you know, some weight loss, and mm-hmm. testosterone helps you lose weight. Yeah. So here's the next thing. Okay. I... It, it usually is something that you see in your friends as time goes by or, or your sisters or mother is that they used to have this nice little waist. Hourglass. Even yeah. after children, they had a waistline. Now, not yeah. everyone grows up with a waistline. Some people are built straight. But in the women who had a waistline, and God forbid mine used to be 24 and it's not, but it's still a waistline. You know, it's not ever going to be what it is before you have children because right. everything kind of stretches a little bit. Right. But... A waistline is a sign of good testosterone. Testosterone stimulates the muscles that are obliques that hold you in here. Mm-hmm. They stimulate the, the growth of the muscles that are down the front, which are the rectus muscles. Everybody wants to have a six pack. They stimulate all. I've got, I've got one. I just have it cushioned. Yeah. Well, yours is so much Upholstered. better. Upholstered. Uh, so, <laughs> so we, so this is something that brings our waist in. And when our testosterone starts dropping, our waist just kind of expands. We not only can be straight then and our clothes don't fit, but then we can even be bulged out or in the middle, like bulged out here, but bulged out here as well. And that's a sign of no testosterone. Testosterone keeps estrone, which is the old lady belly fat hormone, down. So so that's how it works for that. So again, why are we having this conversation? <laughs> there are things that you can do cosmetically to disguise or manage the image that you project. 
you can use makeups, you can use eyeliners, you can do things to your hair, uh, you can have uh, laser surgery, what, you can have a good tailor and then cover yes, a lot and, of, of damage. Or spanks. And, and so the, <laughs> the point isn't to harass you about the way you look. The point is to say there are visible signs that are uh, in tandem with the aging processes we've always experienced it that can be fought back. They can't be stopped forever. You're going you're gonna to age and you're going to die. But we're all about the quality of life for as long as you live. And there are some things that you can do early if you know to do them. If you know to go to a physician that understands and, and has this information and will treat them so that you can work to maintain your health, maintain your muscle mass, maintain your strength, maintain your bone strength, maintain your hair quality, to, to do these things that help the quality of your life and your health as you age. There are visible signs of getting old. I mean, you don't always have to do a blood test, although I do, but these are clues in the mystery of, do you have something going wrong? Because that's the biggest question I have. Right. Women come in and say, what happened to me? Everything right. just fell right. apart and I'm only 42 or 47. Something, something happened and my doctor says I'm fine, I'm just getting old. Well, that means I'm fine, I'm just losing my testosterone. So if you I, I give remember, him all those signs, he may or she may I, I figure it out. I remember an interview that we did and it's posted on the testimonials page of your website, mm -hmm. biobalancehealth.com, where the woman came in and said to you in tears, I have to have you tell me if I'm going crazy because so much has changed so quickly in, in my a, body and in my in life. In a bad way. In That's bad when she way. first came I've to gone see downhill me. And, I, and, and I'm having mood swings and I'm having all these symptoms and Am I crazy or is this real? Things and, you can't see. And you were able to say, you're not crazy, it is real. And and the good news is there's something we can do about it. That's right. And she she and her husband both were just really well pleased. And if you're interested, go check the testimonials sometimes. This is not just all stuff that she makes up and sells. This is stuff <laughs> that really does happen. This has tons of research behind it where whenever you hear somebody say there's no research behind testosterone and what it does for you, mm -hmm. they're either dumb because they're not looking mm -hmm. they just never looked or they don't want to admit it but there are thousands of articles about what testosterone replacement can do for men and women and all you have to do is find it well it, it's it, it's not i'm not confabulating something this is real and it works right it really works and I, and we have a great success rate so that that's kind of proof to me not just research and if you do what they say it doesn't work well then i don't think the research is right this research it works mm -hmm. that's what we want you to know is that there's hope if you see these things happening to yourself or someone you love maybe you can nicely say well maybe it's your hormones and give them some hope and and hormones does not mean just estrogen and if you don't want to say it, buy a copy of our book and give it to them, The Secret Female <laughs> yeah. Hormone, because all of this information is explained in there. And, and the point consistently is that you don't just have to, to live like an animal in the field when the rain comes and the wind comes and the snow comes. You just stand and endure it. There are things that you can do to improve the quality of your health, the length and quality of your life. And we want you to know about those things. And many of them, the awareness for the intervention begins when you have physical awareness of physical signs that are changing. Because you're not gonna have a lab test. You're not gonna be able to go and get a lab test just when you have a curiosity. Uh, a doctor has to order those and they're expensive and there has to be a reason for them. But if you go in and say, I'm having this symptom, this symptom, and this symptom, I've read this book and it suggests that this could be the reason why, can you check it out, doctor? Hopefully they will listen to you and say, sure, we can check that out. Best of luck. We hope you feel better and we hope your friends get better as well. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.